Hello, welcome to our video tutorial on R mark Markdown language in R, in R and uh, how to knit reports based on R Markdown uh, files in R Studio. Before we start with, with the actual tutorial, I would like to note a couple of things. Number one, this R Markdown uh, file is available to you through Canvas right below this video, so you can and should follow along as you proceed through this tutorial. Number two, I would like to emphasize that this tutorial is not meant to be a replacement for all the R Markdown materials that are posted in Canvas. You need to read those R Markdown tutorials before watching this video tutorial, because this video tutorial is more of a hands-on demonstration of how R Markdown is used. Number three, I would like to uh, stress the importance of this topic for your uh, individual project. At the end of the course, you will submit your final research report in the form of two files. First of all, the R Markdown file. This is where you will enter all of your R code and your comments related to uh, the methodology data. This is where you will enter your literature review, your introduction, and things like that. So you, you will have to submit an R Markdown file plus a document file generated from this R Markdown file. So today I will show you how R Markdown uh, language is used in conjunction with R code and also how to generate doc reports based on that. So those are the main goals of this demonstration. So let's turn uh, to our R Markdown file and the name of this file is provided right here. First of all, at the very top, you have the output uh, uh, information inserted. This happens when you, uh, when you knit this R Markdown file into a report and this is something that I will show you later. Now, also at, at, the, uh, at the top of the document, you have the so-called YAML header. YAML is a, is a markup language used for generating headers. So you have very basic information here. You have the title of the report, you have the author, you have the date, and also the output type, which is Word document, okay? So in your, it is required that in your report, you also include not like a title page created in Microsoft Word, but a standard YAML header uh, generated in R Markdown. By the way, in order for you to use R Markdown language, you need to install uh, and load uh, two packages, R Markdown and Knitter. So here you have two commands for installing those packages, and then you have two commands for uh, loading those packages in, into the environment. So uh, once you load those packages, you should see those packages reflected here in this packages tab uh, with the uh, check mark provided uh, next to their names. By the way, uh, here we have uh, the following option, uh, eval equals to false. If eval means, uh, if it's set to false, it means the code will not be run and the results will not be included. This is done so that uh, you don't reinstall those packages every time you need this report. So if you want to do it now, like if you want to install and load those packages, if you don't have it, you can run it once. But then after that, since eval is set to false, uh, this code will not be run or displayed again, right? Because, you know, it doesn't make sense to keep reinstalling those packages every time you need this report. We're also going to, uh, again, jumping forward a little bit, I would like to say that those hashtags, they are used for formatting headings. Like, for example, in your final report, you will have uh, introduction, uh, literature review, theory, so all those can be formatted as level two headings. The reason it's level two because you have two hashtags. If you put three, it's level three. If you put uh, four, it's level four and so forth. Uh, first, we're going to set some global options. Uh, by the way, you already saw that uh, our code is embedded within the following uh, uh, markup elements. You have the opening element uh, for, the R, uh, for the R code, and it has certain parameters, certain settings included. Uh, this is the name of the chunk code, which is set up. And this is the setting for the chunk of code. And then this is how it ends with the following symbol. So this is how in, you know, sections of code are uh, marked in an R Markdown document. When you work on your individual project, I suggest, I mean, you, it's, it's up to you, whatever works better for you. You can start with a simple R file where you run the code and then you can transform it into R Markdown file, or which is more advisable, you can do this at the same time. You can start writing comments, introduction, and then including chunks of R code uh, uh, all at once. Uh, this is considered uh, to be uh, in compliance with the so-called literate programming paradigm uh, outlined by Donald Knott, where your, your coding and your comments, your explanations are intertwined to make sure you remember your own work and other people can easily understand and remember your work as well. 
but it's up to you how exactly you do it. So the first chunk of code called set, well, actually it's not the first, it's, uh, this is the first chunk of code called pressure. This one is second one called setup. So what we're doing, we're just setting a global option. We're saying by default, uh, echo is set to true. The echo parameter uh, uh, basically is for uh, indicating whether you want uh, the code to be displayed along the result. So setting equal to true means by default, if we have a chunk of R code, we want the code to be displayed before the results of that code are displayed. In other words, we want to see both the code and results. Okay. Uh, by the way, to make things a bit complicated here, the, the option for this chunk of code is include false. Now the include option, and again, you can read about all those options in the materials and tutorials about R Markdown language that I provided to you through Canvas. Uh, but here I will explain that the include option uh, indicates whether the code and the results are included uh, in, the, in the output, okay? So if it's set false, it means the code and results are not included in the output. It will run, but it will not be included in the output because it's related to settings. Maybe you don't want to report, show it in your report. Now this is different from eval. Eval means it's not going to be run, right? So this will run, uh, but it will not be included in the output in the report that you need. So, so this is another section. So now we're starting uh, another section marked with level two headings. So this is, an, you know, once again, this is an R Markdown document. Uh, Markdown is a simple formatting syntax for authoring HTML, PDF, and MS Word documents. Uh, again, uh, to be a bit conceptual here, I would like to explain that uh, this is the so-called literate programming paradigm. If you ever written code uh, yourself, especially if you've done it professionally, you know how hard it is sometimes to understand somebody's code, right? It, it's just hard to understand somebody else's way of thinking, you know, uh, hard to... Sometimes people use very bad, uh, poor variable names, like, you know, they're not very meaningful. And overall, the complexity is, is there as well. So all those things make it hard to understand somebody else's code. In fact, I've heard from some developers that sometimes it's easier for them to sit down and write code from scratch rather than trying to understand what somebody else wrote and, and correct errors and fine tune it for their own purposes. Now, to, limit, to eliminate that problem of uh, programmers understanding other people's code and being able to reuse it and modify it, Donald North, who is one of the most well-known professors in computer science, he came up with the so-called literate programming paradigm. And there is a book that he wrote that has the same name, Literate Programming. So under this paradigm, you don't write code and then just uh, forget about it. Because again, I, I've experienced that myself. Maybe you can relate to, to this experience as, as well. Sometimes I write code and, you know, it's like, you know, not, not that complicated, let's say 20 lines of code, 30 lines of code. And then I let it sit for a couple of weeks, sometimes a couple of months, and I go back to this code and I'm like, oh my God, I don't understand what this code does. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I was able to, you know, I was able to write such a great code. I, I didn't know it was me, right? So in other words, I completely forgot like what I wrote, how I wrote it and what it means, right? So to prevent the situation, you need to uh, create comments for your code as you write code. Not in a way where you write code first and then you forget what you wrote and then you start thinking about comments. So, so you write comments as you go, right? And the R Markdown language implements the paradigm in a very elegant fashion. Not only you can write comments, uh, you know, as you write code, you know, all those things like output, comments, code itself, you know, settings for that code, uh, visualizations, they're all elegantly meshed together so that everything is in one place and you will never forget what you wrote. And then it also uh, increases uh, the ease with which you can communicate the results of your uh, research project in R as well. As, as I already mentioned, eventually you will generate a report that can be understood by all kinds of people. You know, it can be in doc format, it can be in PDF format. So you can easily distribute and, and uh, by distributing and communicate the results as a result of that literate programming paradigm being implemented in RStudio with the help of R Markdown language. So yeah, that's that's the essence. Uh, so this is our Markdown document. You put your own text, your, your own comments. Again, this is something that you have to do for your own individual project. And then once you're done, you knit this document. So this is uh, the knit button. So in our case, we'll go ahead and knit it to a word. So you'll see how it looks like. If you don't have any errors, everything should compile and you should get something that looks like this. So this is your document knitted or created from that R Markdown file. So you have your title, you have your name, you have date. Uh, so this is your, uh, uh, you know, I'll put this line you don't need it here. So this uh, YAML header, it was uh, implemented here. So here we have uh, information to all those uh, uh, runs of code, all those chunks of code that you have run and things like that.
so here we have all those sections that we'll go through. So this is the kind of document you need to generate uh, from your R Markdown file. Um, so, so the first thing I'll show you, like, so this uh, next chunk of code uh, uses uh, a data frame called cars. You know, as you can tell from the name of the data, of the data frame, it contains information about cars. So use the summary function to generate uh, uh, summary information about this data set. So once again, I will, I will need this report uh, to show you the outcome as we go. So here's the summary for the cars data set. It's like basic descriptive statistics in relation to this data set. And I believe this data set contains MPG miles per gallon for various cars. So that's, that's the kind of output that we get. Uh, you can also include plots in your document. So uh, here we have a built-in data set called pre uh, pressure, uh, uh, pressure uh, the name of the chunk of this R code is pressure plot. So we use this plot command to build this plot. So it will look something like this. So this is your plot. It's a scatter plot of temperature versus pressure. Uh, so when you put echo false, it means, remember, by default, the global option echo is true, so the code will be included with the output, but here we set echo to false, so the command itself, that plot command, is not included with this visualization. But the text that we type here is included, so this is another section. So there are many uh, parameters uh, uh, that you can use in relation to uh, chunks of R code like this, and we went over some of them, so I suggest you stop and uh, spend some time reading about those parameters. Uh, by the way, one just I will just bring your attention to one useful parameter, a cache uh, parameter, and you can set it to cache true or cache false. Uh, so, so the so what it does, it, it uh, uh, caches the results for future renders. So, for example, if you set cache true, it means the results of that code will not uh, the uh, you know the results of this code will remain the same. So, in other words, every time you need this report, you will not rerun the results. Why, why this feature may be uh, useful? Well, it's useful if you're dealing like with big data. For example, there are some uh, computational tasks that take hours to complete. For example, I had a project where I had to download, let's say, 50,000 of uh, posts from the web, like, you know, text, right? And my script run like something along the lines of 10 hours. So I need to download all those chunks of text before doing text mining. Now, you see, each time I, I, I run it, I don't want the script to run for 10 hours downloading all those descriptions. So I run it once and I set cache to true, which means that it will not be run, you know, that 10 hour download will not be initiated again. The previous results will be stored, okay? Or maybe it's something related to text mining. Some text mining tasks are very computationally intensive. So if you do like some kind of text mining processing for a large data set, for me, like giving my computer configuration, everything that is above 5,000 is already problematic. Uh, from a computational standpoint. I'm talking about text mining data sets, not numerical data sets. So I will set cache to true to make sure I don't uh, redo that text mining processing again because it takes a lot of time and consumes a lot of resources from my computer. So familiar, familiarize yourself with those uh, attributes uh, and op or options that you can include with, with uh, R code chunks. So here uh, we have an example of how you can insert the figure into your report. So you have uh, two data frame, two vectors, and you, you uh, join them together into a data frame, and then you plot that data frame. So again, you'll get a simple scatter plot that looks like this. There are only uh, four observations, uh, four rows in the data frame. You can insert tables. You can just uh, insert like the name of the data frame, and it will be uh, provided as an output. You know, not, not, it's not a very nice way to display data, but nevertheless, that's what it is. You have information about cars, uh, provided here. Or you can use cable function. Cable function will create like a more, uh, a, a better layout for a table in the output file. So here we're using it to the, uh, we're applying that uh, cable function to the simple data frame that has A and B columns. And this is what we get as an output. It looks nice. Also, you can create table in ma tables manually using R markdown elements for table. So here we have plant temperature growth. And here's the syntax. So this is center alignment, uh, left alignment, right alignment, and outer alignment. So the result of the table will look like this, right? So we format it like this. Uh, one package that I suggest uh, that you explore in detail is the so-called Stargazer package. You need to install and load it. What Star, uh, Stargazer package does, and here I already have it installed, so I'm just using library command to load it, 
it will generate very nice output tables using HTML. And then what you can do, you can take that HTML code, uh, open it from, from your browser, and then uh, uh, copy it from the HTML page and insert it into a Word file, you know, something like that. So uh, it will save you a lot of time because it will generate very neat professional looking tables for descriptive statistics and linear models, regression models. Uh, a lot of times people use regression modeling for their own projects, so that will save you, you know, it will save you a lot of time uh, uh, to, to do it in that fashion. So yeah, I will show you how this output looks like. So we just run this chunk of code, right? And this is the, the output. So this is the, uh, the HTML output uh, that can be used to insert a meet table into your Word document. So what I can do, I can copy this HTML, then go to Notepad, uh, paste that HTML, then go to File, uh, Save As, and I'll just save it to my uh, desktop somewhere. So I'll save it to desktop, and I will call it uh, Meet Table. And then the extension will be HTML. So hopefully it will be uh, viewed as an HTML file. So you save it like that. And then what you can do, uh, go to Word, and then go File, Open, and I'll just select that HTML file. Made a mistake there. So you see now you have very nice looking, nice formatted descriptive table imported into your Word document. And uh, I don't know what kind of experience you have, but sometimes it takes a lot of time to create nice tables, especially based on statistical output. You need to enter all those numbers, you need to uh, format uh, the table, and here we have it provided to you right here. Okay, some other elements of our syntax. If you want to put something in italic, then put asterisks around it. If you want to put something in bold, then put two asterisks. Uh, if you want to put code in text, which means just like code examples without this code being executed during the knitting process, then put uh, single quotes around it. So again, I told you about headers. This is level one, this is level two. So perhaps your title will be level one, your header, uh, other headers like introduction, literature review will be level two. And you'll put hashtags to indicate that. Uh, but again, if it's within the code, then within the R code chunk, then this hashtag means uh, a comment. Um, here we have some other elements like unordered list, ordered list. Uh, you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, it looks like this. So this is uh, unordered list. This is ordered list. And you can also uh, enter formulas using latex language. I think that's what it is. You can enter formulas uh, of any form uh, within your R markdown file and it will be transferred to your doc. So once again, I'll show you like once you're done with your R markdown file and given that you don't have any errors in R syntax or R markdown syntax, you should be able to knit uh, this file into a Word file. So 100% execution is complete and you will get something that looks like this. So that will be your final deliverable for this course. You will uh, submit your R markdown file and based on that, you will generate uh, a doc file. And I will mostly read your doc file, and then if I have any questions or concerns, if you want to run code, I will go back to your uh, R markdown file as well. But of course, you need to, just like as uh, what the requirement says, you need to store other required information like data files, right? You need to submit it as well in order for me to run, you know, run R markdown uh, file. Uh, the only exception from that, if you have something that is confidential, like let's say it's from your own organization, then you don't don't uh, give me the, 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 the data file. The R markdown file and uh, the doc file should be enough. But since most people are using publicly available data sets for their individual projects, then why not submit the data file as well so I can run your uh, R markdown file as well if I have any questions. Okay, so this completes our tutorial on uh, using R markdown language and uh, Nidra package to produce reports uh, based on R markdown files. Uh, thank you for listening.